Okay, so the next part of this technical lecture is specifically on the piece of software Photoshop. Photoshop is the raster-based graphic editing program that we're going to be using. Um, the other type of a raster-based image is, I'll go into that in a second, but just for your information, the other type of image that we're going to create or um, image file that we're going to work within is a vector-based one. Um, but we'll cover that in the, in the second lecture. Uh, Photoshop is a part of the Adobe suite, which means that it's compatible within other Adobe pieces of software. Photoshop file formats work really well with InDesign. Um, the native file format that you work within is called the PSD, so it has the suffix um, .psd. And the PSD file allows you to save um, layers of information or layers of data, image data, upon a canvas. And I'll go through that when we head into Photoshop. So if you were to take a digital photo on your camera or to scan something, uh, once you import it into Photoshop, it's converted into a raster-based image. And that raster-based image is given a resolution. OK, so. Um, Raster entities. Raster entities usually come from photographs. If you scan a document, it turns it into um, a raster entity, a series of pixels, um, an image made up of a series of pixels, uh, which is the second point here. Um, a raster entity is um, a, a grid of coloured squares. Each one of those coloured squares has different information. Same thing when you, you take a photo, it produces a grid of coloured squares called pixels. Um, the more pixels you have, the more realistic the image looks, uh, the closer to, you know, there's a crispness to it. Uh, the more pixels that you have, however, increase the file size. Um, raster en entities, have a read of these on your own, but generally they're infinitely manipulable. So upon this grid, you can add color, you can add other information, other images, and build up uh, a, a, um, a document, and the image, um, examples of this will be shown in the le in the in the following lectures over the next few weeks. So the raster-based program, as I've already identified, is Photoshop that we're using. So an example of, um, I guess, just to see the pixel layout of an image such as this, when you've zoomed out, you can't actually identify the edges of the invisible grid. Um, when you move in closer to the image, you'll start to see that there is a, a grid and each one of these little squares has colour information um, and that makes up the bigger image. So when you're looking at a monitor or you're looking at a, um, yeah, let's say a monitor or a smartphone or any type of screen, there'll be a particular resolution of that screen. Uh, the monitor that you might be looking at in the labs might have um, 144 dots horizontally and 144 dots vertically per inch of screen space. Uh, something like the iPhone has now 300 dots per inch, which is comparable, they say, to paper, although, you know, there's something different always about looking at um, information on a, on a piece of paper. Uh, the, a really important thing for you to understand is that the more dots that you have, um, the better resolution you have, the, the clearer the image. The less you have, the more pixelized it'll be. And you will be assessed on um, your ability to keep an image very, very crisp whilst in the first instance when you take it, when you put it into Photoshop to edit it, and when you export it um, to print, um, or to to a PDF to upload onto WebCT for submission, uh, that it has to still retain a crispness. If it ends up pixelized, you'll be penalized heavily. Uh, as a rule of thumb, um, for screen, use a minimum of 72 dpi. So never print anything at a resolution of 72 dots per inch. And, and in Photoshop, the first thing I'll do is I'll show you how to set up a canvas and, and the dots per inch. Uh, for print, use 300 dpi. As a general rule, just stay with 300 dpi. Um, so I'm just going to go through the Photoshop interface now. 
uh, first of all, I'd like you to go to the Photoshop section of the reader. Now, the section on Photoshop, if you go down the list, is on page 26. So I'm just going to go all the way down to 26. And uh, I strongly suggest that you have a bit of a read of this. Um, it goes through the user interface in detail and what all the, the pieces of Photoshop are. So just make note of that. Have that open with you while we're working. Uh, now to open Photoshop, go to All Programs on your Start menu, up to Design Premium, go down to Photoshop CS5. Okay, so in front of you, you have your Photoshop interface. Um, we've got pull-down menus up here, Help, one that has this, uh, links to all the, the working palettes of Photoshop, uh, presets for palette locations and types uh, relating to particular tasks. For example, if you're a pho photographer, you'll use different commands within Photoshop. Um, this is your work area. Uh, so when you create a canvas, this is where it's going to go. And down the side here is your toolbar. Um, now, very importantly, you've got your help menu. So if you hit F1, which I've just done, it'll open up a search box, usually a couple of pop-ups. I'm not going to update those now. Um, but if you needed to find out, say, what the move tool is, I'll just go back here for a second. If you hover over an icon, it brings up what it is and you can search for Move Tool. Uh, using Photoshop, there's a lot of um, information on the workspace here, the basics of it, and the particular tools that you're going to use. So under Tools here, we've got um, Move again, just there. So if we um, need to, we can find out exactly what the Move Tool does. So coming back here, the first thing that we need to do, especially for the assignment and the tutorial, tutorial number one, is um, create a canvas. What we're going to be doing, uh, first part of the assignment requires you to create at least one, or well, you need to create two as minimum. Uh, uh, photo montages in the style of David Hockney. So the way that you work in Photoshop is very similar to a physical way, and I always try to compare it to the physical because uh, there's nothing more natural than being able to convert an idea directly through your hand. Um, the, the computer kind of becomes an intermediary between uh, an output and your idea. So you've just got to be careful and you, I always try to think physically. So in the case of this piece here by Hockney, you can see that he would have taken physical photographs and applied them directly to a canvas that's blue and stuck them on there physically, which you guys can work in that way if you want and take a photo and, you know, I have no problem with that, but you kind of defeat the purpose. I think what you want to do is um, use Photoshop to create a similar effect. So the first thing that I always get people to do in Photoshop is to work on a canvas, just as you would if you were painting. And to do this, we go File, New. Now under here, there's a series of presets. I'm going to say uh, First A3 Canvas. Resolution. This comes back to the, what I just explained before. By default, we've got 72. Under here, there's a series of presets. I'm going to go to International Paper Size. In International Paper Size, we have a series of paper sizes that you will be familiar with, A4, A3. You can make bigger ones by putting in, in your own information. If you choose paper, it automatically sets the resolution to 300 pixels per inch, which is great. Okay, so um, the idea, just to reiterate, come back here, is to create something similar to the blue canvas. I'm going to do it as white. And then what we're going to do from a series of photographs that I've taken previously, we're going to start to compile and lay out a scene. Now remember that when you do it with the assignment, you have to also work within the theme of movement. Okay? So... Sorry, I'm jumping around a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work at A3. I have my width set, my height. So at the moment, it's in portrait. We can flip this around later. And what I will suggest is that you work with CMYK color. And I'll go through the Y in the lecture. Now I hit OK. So there is my first canvas. All right. 
just as you would start an oil painting, you have a canvas to work from. Now all of these things start to light up. Now we've got our history and the first option that we've used here is move. Um, what I would suggest not to do, okay, although you can if you want to just edit individual items. Now what I just did is I grabbed the actual tab with the name of my first A3 canvas and I dragged and I dropped it and it's freed it up so now it floats around the uh, workspace. What I would suggest you don't do is this file open I'm just going to navigate through to where I took all my I dumped all my pictures what I'm not going to do is just open up an image and work within that and this um, why I suggest we don't do this is because if you if you work within an image you're working within a, a given pixel and resolution and canvas ratio that's been set not by you but by the camera or the device or the scanner that you're using now if we go to image and we go down to canvas size you'll see that the canvas size is actually quite odd at 68.3 by 91.44 and under image you can also see that it's an image size that pertains to 72 dots per inch okay whereas if we have our canvas a series of pixels If I go to image size, it holds exactly 29.7 by 42 centimetres, which is our A3 canvas size at 300 dpi. So in the first exercise, what I want you guys to do, and this is what you'll be doing in the tutorial, is going back to the Hockney, is if we imagine that that's our A3 canvas, which it's not, but we're going to drag each one of those images onto a canvas very simple using drag and drop. So the first tools that we're going to be using are the marquee tools which are the top one. We might use the second one. We're going to be very selective with the commands that we use. Um, the, we might use the navigator as a palette. We'll definitely start the, the, the most important palette that will start to be used is this one called layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to open some of these images that I took. I'm going to open up one, two, three, four, five, six. I think I said that the minimum number of pictures that you are allowed to use is 20 in the assignment. So they've stacked here now in this little bar, which is quite annoying. So I'm just going to drag these and free up them. So you just grab the title bar and you drag it down if that happens. Uh, and they're very big, you know, the nature of photography these days is that you'll get photos that are probably going to be bigger than the canvas. Okay, so that means that if we're working on a canvas and it's got a size of, sorry, an image size of 29.7 by 42 centimetres in height at 300 dpi, we've got 3,508 pixels across the top of our canvas and down the side we've got 4,961 pixels. Okay, so if we're, what I'm going to do, just as Hockney would in a physical sense, I'm going to drag across these images onto here. So let's take the first one, 2105. I've got my move tool, I click anywhere in the picture and I drag it over to the canvas. Okay, you can see how big it is. Um, if I, as I saw before with my canvas, the image size was 3508 by 4961. Each one of these images that was taken with my camera is 1936 by 2592. So that's why it takes up just a little bit over a half of my width of my page. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start, I'll just bring in a few of these. Uh, and then what we can do is we can t start to rescale them. So I'm just going to pause for a sec. Sorry, let me, let me just bring one more in and then we can pause. So I'll bring that one across and I'll minimize it. Bring this one across. Minimize it. And I'll pause for a minute and go through and do a whole...